Hello, good evening, and welcome to our front. Now, some 41 years ago, on June 19, 1983, there was an attempted uh, removal of the ruling Provisional National Defense Council, that's PNDC, headed by Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. This uprising, now a largely forgotten episode in Ghanaian history, will be revisited today. We'll explore what transpired, the manner in which events unfolded, and the lessons that can be drawn from this significant yet overlooked period. Now, joining me in this conversation, very important conversation, is a man who was in the thick of affairs during the December 31, 1981 coup that toppled the Liman administration. And subsequently, during June 19, 1983, and I'm talking here about the ex PNDC agent in the person of ex corporal of the Ghana Armed Forces, Matthew Adabuga. He's joining us from his base in, in Norway. And, Serge, you're welcome to our front. Thank you very much. My I, pleasure. I hope you are doing well. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, for many people, they only knew of your exploits way back then. But since the 80s, have you been frequenting Ghana? Yes, uh, recently I was there. That was uh, last year. Uh, yeah, March. No, last year, December. And I came in March. March this year. So I was there for a period of three months. And before then, after the National Reconciliation, as you might have seen, I was there to meet... Uh, some of these people I accused, like uh, the person of Fly Lefton and J.J. Rollins. When he was alive, Captain Kojo Chikata and uh, Riyad Kozefe uh, and others. Mm. So, I have yeah. had cause to share some of your videos, and it appears to be a very popular episode with uh, yeah. Riyad Kozefe, for example. When yes, you were threatening yes. to meet him outside and uh, engage him in festival yeah, yeah, yeah. of a sort. I mean, yes. let people have, we'll come to the main conversation about June 19th, but let people have a background to that. Somewhere early John Kofor government, we had a National Reconciliation Commission. Then you appeared. What was this banter with Riyad Josefe about? Yeah, the. the what happened was that uh, I accused uh, Flyland and Rollins, Chikata, uh, Major Wallace Bedeman, uh, those people who were involved in all this uh, murder of judges and uh, looting of the state. So they brought uh, Captain Chikata came there. He came there with about five lawyers. And then uh, the leading one was uh, Obea Samoa. So after flowing them, then they went and prepared Riyadh to come and meet me. If you heard him on the phone, say, he wanted to unawuna me, you know. So when he started talking and uh, going, instead of going to the main topic, he was uh, dilly dallying behind the thing. And eventually, I was peace of us. Okay, if uh, I am telling you the truth and you don't take it. The best way is to go out and uh, sort it out, the jungle way, because he could not fight me, you see. And uh, that was what made me to... Well, I was trying to explain to him to get to the point where we were meeting at the Tessano Club, or what we call, uh, yeah, that place, uh, Tessano Gardens, which he himself knew. You see, rather than send him to come and take pictures of us, some of my colleagues, I was there with Eric Asari, Brahma, Alewu, Baba Kwenkeni, what's the name of Ato Usu. He came and took pictures and went and saw to Rollins. So that was where we were meeting to do these operations. Some of my colleagues, they know about all this, but uh, for whatever reasons, uh, they refused to back me. But uh, that was, uh, anyway, I tried to let him understand that. He was the architect going around selling all this uh, gold, gold uh, stuff and the rest. Uh, in other words, he was uh, testing on his fellow Lebanese for whatever reasons. Mm. Now, let me get this straight. Yesterday was June 19th. 
Yes. And in Ghanaian history, we know of May 15th, the aborted coup. If I, I can go back, we know of what happened yes. in 1966, where the Nkrumah yes. government was overthrown. We also know of what happened to the, Liman, the, the Buzia government, which was also subsequently overthrown. Now, we know that the SMCs, the first one under a champion came and was replaced with SNC2, which was almost like a palace school because it's the same set of military people. We know June 4th happened, and June 4th is an epoch period in our history. And we also know that there was, in December 31st, 1981, the removal of the Liman administration. Let me get this straight. You were active in the removal of the Liman administration, right? Yes, very, very active. Actually, uh, when I started, I didn't end till uh, the first, you know. I was the first person to release the shot. I was the one who brought Rollins from 37 military hospital in an ambulance, and I hid him in my room, and I was the one who sent him to the ASI area before the rest uh, join up. I led them to seize the ammo cars, and then I released the first shot. So, in a sense, me and my friends took power and gave it to Rollins on a silver platter. That is it. You are talking about uh, what they call it, the removal of Liban here. Yes. How was it planned? Say again. How was it planned? Who were the masterminds? Well, it, yeah, it was a plan. It was a long shot, you know. It was a long shot. But maybe we'll come to that uh, later. Because uh, uh, the whole thing started, it was a security problem. When uh, Brigadier Nunu Mensa, uh, and Okwenu and uh, Rollins himself, they were uh, relieved from the army after June 4th. Okay. See, that was how the whole th thing started. So they started agitating. And Rowling started going from unit to unit. Within six months, I remember Francis Poku, who was a, a, this thing, a, a minister in the fourth government. Yeah, national security minister. Yes. He was working in the SIB. Yeah. Special branch that time. Okay. And within that time, he has already written a report that Rollins is making a move. And instead of them to take action, they posted him to war. You understand? Oh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> it was after 31st, he, he, he passed through there and went away. So you could see that they, they started uh, those things. And then another one called Captain Usu Acha. It was in the military intelligence. The second infantry brigade, there were 12 of them, they caught them. And they all uh, confessed that it was Rollins who sponsored them. They didn't do anything, you know. It was going on like that. Most of the units, before finally it came to some of us, the Air Force, in fact, at the first, we released a lot of them from the prisons, including officers. And the last thing that broke the cameras back was that some few weeks to the operation 31st, Rowling went to the Togolese capital to meet uh, the Libyans, you understand, so that uh, they could work out the modalities. And then this Togolese uh, intelligence, there's room on him, you see, and then they relay back to their Ghanaian counterpart. It was uh, Ona Ojija, Ken Ona Ojija. And the two I see was uh, Abu Brahma. So they lay ambush for uh, Rollins. Then it has to go to Dr. Lemar's uh, protocol demands. Dr. Nabila was a uh, minister for chieftaincy or whatever it is, no, presidential affairs. Yeah. He went to back to he went to Lemar, and Lemar it came back that they should leave him alone. So when I was saying that Dr. Lemar was involved, people did not understand. You see, because that even if they had uh, arrested him and or make a kind of move, maybe thirty first wouldn't have come. But they left the man. Then thirty first Burai. You see, so these are some of the things. But the actual planning, the last time 
I met Chris Atima at the Achimota Forest. And then, even though Dr. Lehman said they shouldn't do anything, all his contacts, they were watching them 24 hours. So it was now a parasite moving from one place to another. And when I met him at Achimota Forest, he was, that was the second time. It was like this, in my, in a, like a, somebody who had been eating for six months. He, he knelt down, he was crying, he was begging me to add a booger. If I could speak to the Ghanaian people for just 10 minutes and I die, I will be a happy man in my grave. I'm sorry he's dead, but by now he'll be turning his grave. So I was talking about this thing about uh, tribal issues and uh, this kind of uh, confusion and uh, how we have so many tribes and this thing. So Chris Atin was the one who came in with some uh, children. They call it book long. He was talking plenty and about what and what and what. He brought me of a Nigerian this and this and there's so many countries how revolutions work there. So finally, I told him, okay, I'm going to see my mother to come. I think he gave me about 21 cities. 21 cities at that time is big money to take transport. Okay. And he, yeah, he told me it was the, uh, this uh, GPR something, something. Those Ghana private route transport in Tema. Okay. They wanted him to buy, help buy their ties, you know. So that, that was the money. The, the money was brand new cities. But later on, someone told me Gaddafi gave uh, about one million for that operation. So whether he was telling me lies, I don't know. I think Gaddafi gave the Libyan leader, Muammar al Gaddafi. Yes, for the operation. For... Uh, he used some to buy some fishing trawler for the mother. Mm. You investigate, you get it. You understand? So this is what happened. I want to. Uh, so my mother and I said, okay, I am going on a journey. I may come, I may not come. If I don't come, that's it. It should count me as one of the But if it should give me her blessing. Then I passed through Chibeli. Chibeli is a Burkina Faso. I went and fortified myself. Then I went to where this man was, uh, he had my Lamakara before I came. So when I came now, I said, okay, boy, let's go. Yaro, I say, Yaro, Mute. You understand? Yaro me boy. So when I was uh, doing this thing, I have to drive this Amoka into the enemy territory and come out and shoot. The whole night I was driving till daybreak. I want Felix Akosa repeat me and fire him. So I was surprised that uh, later on he was denying me. But thank God I, I was alive to be able to correct him before he died. Mm. But it, it's not a surprise because uh, that is how life is. If I were dead, at least you, you, people would believe that he never knew me. But I was there to meet him at the NRC. And he was telling me he needed a, a lie detector or chemical interrogation. You see? But I wonder why he didn't give a champion and the generous. A chemical, the benefit of chemical interrogation, and even the judges. So, so you see where the point is. I get your mm. point. I, I want to. So that is how involved you were. But were you close yeah. to? Were you close to uh, former President Rawlings? Were you close to him? Oh, very, very close. When I came uh, from Boys Company, he was by then uh, uh, riding uh, horses. We were riding together. His horse was called uh, Lucifer. Uh -huh. Nobody could ride that horse uh, apart from Rollins. So you, you hear the name. And when you just want to enter, it will kick you and kick you and uh, make sure that uh, you tumble. So it was uh, Jack Mah Mah uh, Mahoney called Ajoia. He was uh, one of the riders. So he, and my horse was called uh, this in uh, Sumi Sonka. We have Ababana, we have Trafalga, we have uh, Taifa. And we have uh, so many names. So, so how, do, uh, how do you get these names? Because you said that of uh, former President Rollins was called Lucifer. Yes, because it, it was uh, a dangerous horse. Oh, okay. Okay, I get that. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. That is what happened. Nobody can ride it apart from the instructors and the rolling saloon. You see? So even there was this diplomatic uh, course who were coming. I remember Cameroon Dodo. He may not uh, remember me now. Cameroon Dodo? Were... Yes, he was coming there. It was Charlie Squadron in the, what we call, uh, uh, Gonda Barras. Uh, because we were taught uh, it could teach you. You know, when you go to this uh, Reiki, we have these uh, courses you must go through. Uh, so you do Ganre and you do uh, signaling, then you do driving, and then you do this uh, equitation. So we went through, all, and it was that time I met uh, Fly Left and Arole. So he was calling me young. And an interesting story was, anytime we are going for riding, I was always with him because of my age. He called me young. Then Jack Mahoney, when they did break, uh, Rollins and one of the white women who entered the bush there. And then uh, before they come up, they are laughing. Whatever they do, I don't know. You understand? Oh, okay. So this, I, this, this is a bush you are talking about anyway. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, I wanted to know that because if you knew the man so well, and you were very active in making sure that uh, Lima's government was toppled, at what point did you have differences with him uh, that led to the attempted overthrow subsequently? Yes. What happened was that uh, there were these divisions among uh, the PNDC as early as March because Rollins and some of his uh, team went for the IMF to negotiate about uh, bailout, okay. which uh, Akatapora and his group, the uh, team and all those, Kwesiadu uh, and the rest, this is uh, the original NDC boys. They say, no, no, this was the devaluation we're talking about, and uh, we didn't agree to the man. So why? So there was that kind of division, and even the workers banner, they have to ban it. So there, there was uh, this division. But uh, what actually happened was uh, the murder of the judges, you see. What happened was that when uh, uh, this thing, as early as I think October or so, or September, September, uh, these things, they were happening. And then we don't know what happened. So uh, they arrested this man, Amedeka Road. Amedeka went and told Matthias Kujo because they were the brokers sent together that, hey, now they have uh, asked them to do this thing. And then they promised that they will send them to courses and they are not doing anything. So what can they do? So they went to uh, this state house, the age of 600 days. And then they informed Fly Left and um, Odoy, if he's alive, asking what happened. He was a security coordinator. So he said, what? This is what happened? So he organized them that, look, if that's the case, they should arrest uh, Chikata. And that was what happened, and they arrested them that they were planning to. So that was the first uh, instance whereby there was a coup attempt. Before then, there was this. Captain uh, Owu, one commander, Dennis, and uh, the rest, Malik. And Sif Mike, they also wanted to uh, uh, assassinate Rollins on the Independence Day, but they were not successful. But they were uh, on the right. But these people, I'm talking about Odoy and the rest, they were within the PNDC. So that was the first instant this thing happened. Now, when they arrested this people, uh, then it came up that uh, the Yidana, uh, who was working also with a uh, special branch, they started the investigation and then America's name Popa, based on this car and this thing. So as they were investigating, uh, it was believed that uh, Chikata also sent a note that he implicates Akatapore. Good. So it was one of the special branch members uh, who sent an uh, alarm to Alorga Dalo. America has implicated him that he was part of it. And then 
Alorga started shouting that was between Reiki Rei, uh, the girl room and uh, 5B. He was originally from uh, the 5 Battalion of Infantry. So he started shouting, Madras, kill us. Hey, you have killed the judges and we want to put you on me. Blah, blah, blah. He was shouting on the rooftops. So people came around, the soldiers. I remember uh, Lieutenant Asari at that time, he was a Lord Gassimit. Uh, Achana, Peter Achana, I remember Tassiru, Gachipuan. Uh, all of us came around. But what happened was that uh, it was said that these people who wore the smokes were uh, nodness. So that was the message. So we, the nodness, rally behind him. That if that's the case, we were not going to agree. So that is where I started to go against Rollins. Oh, okay. But you ended up in prison. Yes, I ended up in prison because uh, this thing, you know, the reactionaries, Major Sidi Musa and the rest, they took advantage of that and then they wanted to contact us that we should join them. So I reported to Rollins and I reported to Chikata. It was Mali who came and took us. And then uh, Chikata said, okay, I should follow them. Before I realized, they say they have organized a meeting that me and Jiwa should go and join people and arrest them. And I say, how? How can I come and report this? And then you say that I should come and... Before that, it was Rollins who organized a doba. And they say, yes, some people are even planning to. Another booker has come to report. Some of them were in that meeting. Achana was there, Tanti Adomore, Akadema, and most of the defense platoon boys who were from uh, APF, they were constituted the plan, uh, Atalia and the rest. So then, uh, one of the guys came and told me, I was, I say, I can't go. How? How can I go and stand in front of these people? From there, no, then I, I just switch off. And so when they took off, it didn't fail. Remember me and uh, Jiwa, we went to the broker saying with Pashida to foil it. But later or later on, they sat down and they said, no, I didn't report uh, because they asked me to go and join them. So they arrested me. And that sparked the whole thing. And then uh, uh, Akatapora and the rest also said they won't agree. Actually, I went out with uh, Chris Bukara team and the wife. After 23rd, they were in the Lewis room. So, it came to a time that the Satin's wife, uh, the parents were lecturers at the university. So he said I should accompany them so that at least the wife would go and uh, take a hot shower and change her clothes. So when we were coming, there was this curfew. Uh, so he decided that there was this, his friend called uh, Agambila or whatever, mm. at the old passport office. So he passed there that, he, okay, he will be there. Then I decided that, okay, I'll make it to the Bema camp. So I wanted to use uh, the route to Labari. We normally have a shortcut uh, through trade fair, you see. Unknown to me, they have mounted some roadblock somewhere. And then that was where they made me up. And then they sent uh, the Tadu and uh, Kojoli. So Kaili and Kojoli nearly shot me. But uh, he was so drunk that the first shot missed, the second shot he couldn't misfire. Uh, actually, it was because of uh, the way he was drunk. I'm sure he used the bat to hit my stomach. And so the magazine was not fully full. Uh, it's possible that he half pop. So the second shot, when it made cut, all the soldiers, they ran away. Okay, now I, I get your point. You ended up in prison, yes. but but then, how did June nineteenth happen? It yeah. has been called an aborted coup. It has been called a prison break. It has been called yes. so many names. How did it happen? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I was uh, part of the founding, uh, the architect of the planning. It started with uh, myself, 
one go fraud, say, it's called Jones. He was a businessman, and the wife was called Gifty. I don't know whether he's still alive or not. So he was brought there. Apparently, they were also planning. So like I said, no, when we were arrested, there were other people who were also planning. Uh, notably, uh, 27 February 18th. Yeah, 27 83. There was this, uh, our boys, Azibuchwe, Dominica Du, Fiti, Avujifi, Thomas, and the rest. They sympathized with us. And in Akwa and all those people. So they, they were also taken an advantage to, to make a coup. Well, if it is uh, Dr. Esmol NG, if you heard that uh, there was this woman, a CIA woman, he was living at Juwolo. Okay. So they, they also tried, but they didn't succeed. Then there was this Colonel Abitu, uh, Major Ankasi, and the rest, they joined forces. So it was a series of planning. Everybody was planning because of the judges, you see, now. So Kofro said he was planning, he came and met us there. And uh, when I told him my story, he said, okay, if that is the case, uh, he can organize. Actually, he was talking about the Israelis, that he, he and his friend, his secretary, what was the name? Uh, I've forgotten the name. Okay, they were no, I get you, yeah. No, no. So that is how we started. Okay. Me, Gofro, say, Mauku, in the group. We started planning. Then later on, we joined Akadema. Because Akadema, like this, uh, he was with uh, Sayyid Musa, the 23rd. But uh, he was aligned to uh, this uh, Pianim, uh, this uh, the economist. Uh, so we joined him and convinced him. So that is how the, the planning started. And then also, the Togo people were also planning. Apparently, when they were in Togo, uh, Colonel Abito and his group also, Captain Dia and all those things, Larry Fosu there, they wanted to come home. So they needed somebody to come already. So they sent uh, Baba Kankeni. And so when Baba Kankeni came, uh, we told Gofrose, and he told the wife Gifty, and he put him in a hotel to help planning. So we were coordinating with them, and then Farouk also came, one Farouk, uh, yeah. If it I understood you properly, if I understood you properly, this June 19th uprising, 1983, had yes. an element of those of you who were in custody. There yes. was another group that was not in custody, and there was yes. a third group that was also in Togo, all, that working, is it. all working in concert yes. to do the same thing. That is it, that is it. Okay. Especially those inside, mm. who were free. Now, what happened on the day? Yes. On, on that day, uh, what happened was that those who came uh, from Togo, they were able to come to the presence to alert us that they were there. Come. So this businessman, Bofro, said, as I said, he popped through the, the window and saw them. And then he came and gave us the signal that, that they are there. He, and then what, uh, the, what happened was that we were by then in uh, the church praying. So they came and gave us the sign that hey, they are ready, the guys are there. So we quickly waited. When it finished, the pistols were with me. So I shared it to them. And then uh, position them who to do what, do this, this, this. Do those who are going here, sell B. Those who are going to the infirmary where the politicians are. Those who are going to cut uh, the antenna, you know, this uh, Motorola thing. And then that was why. So I decided to take the gate with Tepo. And when we went to the gate, uh, Tepo and me will fire some shots to go inside. After taking the first gate, they quickly locked the second gate. It wasn't easy. So we have to come back. And so they blew the whistle. Prrr. Then what happened was that uh, Fosse and the rest, uh, who were by then also monitoring, they took the ladder. We, 
and then went and put it. So we jumped through the ladder, jumping. It was the Fosse who was the first to jump. The wife was there with a BMW to take him, you see? And then the rest of us, before I could jump, Malik was already positioned there. And they get there because we, do, we couldn't take it. Uh, they, they, this thing, you know, the police, there was a police station attack. They were coming inside. And then the people started firing. Jabba was outside there, Marco was there, Mali uh, and the rest. They were also firing, so it was a, a fight. And then we were jumping like that. Some of our friends who jumped, I don't know what happened. A while later, he jumped and he locked his waist. Oh. Then there was another one called Apana Bongo. He jumped into the sea. You see, behind the, the sea, there was some small gap between where you, you can walk and footpath and the sea. He jumped there, so later on, they killed him. So, so when they, sorry, which prison are we talking about? Because sometimes people are unclear. Fort. The Esa Asha Fort. Fort. Where, yes, Esa Fort. Okay, so you started your breakout from there. within the prisons. Yeah. The prison, when this uh, Togo guy's team, and okay. we link up. Okay. Then, hmm. So what happened was that when we came out, uh, we quickly seized a car for these uh, uh, guys who were assigned various taxes. There were some of them who were going to engineers, Alassane and Tepo. They say he had some weapons there. And then it was a signal. There were those who were going to airport, Brahma and all those people to seize the Amokas. There were so who were going to release Akatapore. There were those who were going here. I went to H uh, James Fort with the rest. After I was running when they met me, I went and released Jiwa there. You understand? Jiwa uh, was there, Eric Asari, and then there was uh, Adam Saki, uh, Lieutenant Enerko Dennis was there, Matthias Kujo, and all those people. Some of them, I went to release them before they joined the car. Then we came and passed through straight to the broadcasting. In fact, we used a uh, circle, and then we used Kanda. So we took them by surprise. Get three. Instead of they were expecting us from the front, we took them from the back. So we, we took the brokers in like that. Get one and get three. And then when I was shouting I all see, around, you mean time, GBC? Yes, GBC. Okay. We took them like that. And then it was just easy for us. So as I was shouting and all around the fence, I was going to the Moab to spark it and then help. I saw that G1 and all those people, they were chasing the, the soldiers. Because we have already taken gate one and three. So it was not level gate two. Unknown to me, as they were running there, they came across the studios. I wasn't there because I was working on the Amoka. <laughs> Ataburu was the Ataburu, David. He said that those who came from Togo, not knowing that the trickers, they said they were coming to join us. Farouk, I don't know whether. He didn't tell us that uh, Colonel Abito was a monk. You understand? I don't know whether Baba Kenken also knew that Colonel Abito was a monk. But this were the people we were dealing with. But the rest of them, Mali, uh, Soblet and Altri and the rest, they, they, uh, Moses Inso, Tanti Adumore, and then another guy. Yeah, they, they decided that they were going to announce for, on behalf of one uh, Colonel Abito. Who was far away at uh, Kajabi in uh, Kenkura. And so, according to Ataburu, Kiwa them were surprised. They were shocked that, ah, well, Kenala Bito and the rest, we didn't know about them. So they also rallied, and then Asari wrote something down, like a, a kind of a hasty speech. And then in the melee, they were fighting among themselves at the what you call the studio, in the Shuri Mili. And Jiwa, uh, Jiwa's brother was called uh, Jabba. He was holding the MG. Anybody coming to announce him, bah, he will hit him. This one can bah, this one can bah. Eventually, his brother, Jiwa, had a, a, a day. And then he entered, the, he sat down and he made the announcement. So when people say Jiwa was the leader, he blanked Jiwa and this. Well, we all did our best, but. This is uh, the naked truth, what happened. That was oh, okay. not to be. So that's how he got to make an announcement, not because that he led. Thing. No, 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 nothing. And at the time, just... 
And at the time, yeah. an announcement meant you had overthrown the military government yeah. of PNDC. That, that is it. Uh, but, uh, but this... I like that. The interesting part is that this attempted removal of the PNDC government did not materialize. Yes. We know that subsequently, the very person of um, Courage Kwashiga gave a subsequent order which counted what you had done earlier. How, yes. did, how did June 19th fail? Yes, this is exactly what I was talking about uh, the lack of discipline and leadership, you understand. First and foremost, uh, those uh, who were to take over the gate too, you see, if all of them know the basic tactics, we were all taught fear craft and uh, this uh, section battle trees and platoon battle days so, or what you call fighting in build up areas, IS and the right. They know all this thing, you and if you take an enemy position, the first thing is all around the fence, you see? And we didn't do that. And then the next thing is to set a set party, you understand, to mob up those uh, cutoffs. Then I'm one casualty report. You have to secure the area, just like football, you understand? You don't just take uh, the ball and go and score. You have to play a kind of game. They didn't do that. And it was just because there were vested interests, you understand? Because, of, as I said, the, those who came were going to announce for this. These people to say no. So that was number one. Then number two, <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Dennis, as I said, he was also in prison. And it was just like God who had sent him to us. So I knew him. I was one of the people who captured the engineer regiment 31st. So I knew him. And then we became friends later on. So I gave my pistol to uh, Atinsov Lieutenant uh, Ochre. He was a captain in the army. And then uh, at Aburu, that uh, they should escort him to go and make the announcement. Unfortunately, when he went, Giwa didn't allow him to announce. Otherwise, it would have been a walkover. I'm sorry to say this. These are my friends, but if we had risen and made him to announce, it would have been a walkover. Because the whole Ghana forces, the engineer regiment, when we talk about men, they have the largest men in numbers. And so <clears throat> he would have just deployed his men, some to castle, some to set roadblocks around Accra, some to join us, some to do the arrest. It was like that. Unfortunately, they refused for him. So he came back to me that Kofi has mentioned his name, Kiwa, but he was going to the, his unit to mobilize his men. You understand? So that was how the whole thing failed. Now, those who came from uh, Togo, there was this kind of mistrust. You understand? That is how they, some of them started going away. And then we too. So that was it. Then the point number two, those who were to go to airport, <coughs> The instruction I gave them was that there were two ammo cars there. When they captured them, they should put one on the runway, mm -hmm. you see, or the what to call that, uh, this thing where they play normally the tarmac. They should station one there. No aircraft take off, no aircraft land. Then the other one, they should go to Air Force and break through, fight their way to the guy room. Oh, yeah, some of our boys were there. Jamie was there, he was a Ghana. Uh, this one, Stanley Ochre, he was a Ghana. Then there was Yami Bachire and the rest. And so that car, they were going to take and go and release them. Then they go to Reiki Regiment, mobilize the other guys. Because by then, Akadema was already gone to five battalion infantry to organize his men. Tepodem has gone to engineers. And those from naval base, them are also. So it was a spontaneous thing. For whatever reason, according to Muru Anobel, who was with them, and they were to go also and bring Akatapore. If Akatapore were there, he would have given a more reasonable 
announcement. Because when we were in prison, we were liaising with him. And what uh, these people, Dr. Nabila, and we have Alex Aji, we have uh, my friend Blay, but the Blay was there. Most of the, the, the politicians were there, Yidana and uh, Otin and the rest. They were trying to reform us, Kwame Pianida, telling us about how this thing uh, will not work. And then, mm. so they told us that when we release Akatapori and he go, they should try to announce that uh, this man, Dr. Lehman, should come back and be reinstated. That is it. So you see how the plan went, but it didn't uh, materialize. They didn't do any of what uh, I instructed them to do or what we told them. Rather, they went and uh, had some fufu. Can you believe that? Wow. Fufu. And after that, they went and left the Amokas at uh, Awudomi Cemetery and buried them there, you know, and they took off. I surely will have to take a break here. When we return, we'll be talking about perhaps yesterday was June 19th. Some yeah. 41 years ago in 1983, there was an attempted removal of the PNDC establishment at the time. We've been talking with a man who was in the thick of affairs about how that failed. And surely, we'll be taking some lessons from how those military periods shaped our history. When we return to speak to Matthew Adabuga, who is joining us from Norway. You welcome back to Art My name is Raymond Darqua. Now, we took it back to history and put into perspective the event that happened on June 19th, 1983. This was an attempted uh, overthrow of the PNDC at the time. This attempted overthrow had some of the people who were in prison and others who were outside and others who were in Togo forming a coalition act together and removing or freeing people who are in prison. So they broke into prisons and freed some of the people to join that. I've been speaking to a man who was in the thick of affairs when it comes to this particular incident. And he's been telling us how the scramble for who to announce that they are taking over the country was what perhaps was the biggest problem with the quest to make this particular uprising successful. And you welcome back to our conversation, as corporal of the Ghana Armed Forces, Matthew Adabuga. Now, I've been saying this because the chunk of what I heard from what you said was that if you were properly coordinated, if you knew the right person to deliver the message at GBC, announced to the people of this republic, and if some of those things were done properly, history would have changed, and perhaps Lima would have been reinstated as president in 1983. That's right. I, I yes. suspect... Okay, well, I can hear you now. Yes, I was yes, saying that... That yeah. is exactly the plan. Well... If... Uh, yeah, if some... Like, but some people had the other plans, some, like I'm saying, and that is uh, what we may talk about and it's still happening because uh, people always have a secret or vested interest when it comes to this thing. Uh, okay. So things never work. Now, did you, were you also able to take over Castle? Castle was the seat of government then. No, uh, the problem was that, as I said, if we had uh, been able to do the initial, because uh, the numbers were not many. So we knew that Rollins was at the castle. So that would have been eventually when we took over the broadcasting and the Burma camp, which uh, the Air Force uh, Amod car was to release people to go and join. And if uh, uh, Akatapol were to make the announcement and the rest, uh, we were thinking that continuously, everybody, or the, even the officers and men, 
uh, hearing a senior officer, because don't forget that the revolution, uh, it was perceived to be against the officers, um, or yeah, the elite or whatever. So it would have been a kind of plus if a senior officer came over to make an announcement, and then it will show that a reconciliation is coming. These are not uh, these uh, TDCs coming to worry us again. Okay. And so, Castell, we didn't go there, but we would have gone there. But uh, Rollins, uh, he was gone. Okay. Now, I, gone. I, need to, I need to also put into perspective what happened after us, briefly. I mean, it, it, it failed woefully. Some of you were arrested. Others were even executed, right? Yes. That is it, because uh, like uh, the breakdown of uh, discipline and leadership started uh, even before we reached the broadcasting house, you see? <clears throat> so you could see how it is. Mm. After that, uh, we were trying to RV, that is uh, rendezvous at uh, Achimota Forest, because we heard that uh, Rollins was there. So we went there and we chased him and a helicopter came and we shot at it and it went away. So once we were there, it was Saji Malik and uh, Jiwa who said that, uh, no, Malik said that uh, he knew uh, Kenarabitu and Kakura, they are coming to a certain house uh, that was uh, uh, Kenarabitu's house. And then he knew where they can get weapons. So they were going there to bring weapons for us to attack. We didn't finish the attack. As we were there, they went and then they didn't come back. Apparently, later on, when I heard, they say that the petrol was finished and what oh, wow. uh, the car they were using. It was a, a kind of police uh, jeep we seized. So they scatter, but uh, that was how we, we also left the Achimota Fort. But we didn't even stop there, you see. The aim was that when plan, uh, plan A failed, we would take plan B. So we took <clears throat> the sleeper to Kumasi. You know, we, we trek towards uh, this in Sawa, and then we used the bush road. The soldiers were here, we were there. And then we stop uh, the distance, the sleeper, and then join. And then uh, the aim was to go to organize at Akumasi. In fact, when we went, went and uh, we met the Asantehini, that was the first place. It was one uh, Dr. Bilson or uh, this thing. Another guy called Obi Minu. They organized that. My brother was there. And then we also had contact at the 4 p.m. Uh, campaign or that Paris and then two brigade brothers. So, so that was what happened. And okay. so that's something. Yeah. Now, yes, because of my time, I want us to look at this. Fast forward to where we are today. Ghana's democracy has flourished and evolved. What can we do to make sure we never have an overthrow of a government on our hands? Well, it's very simple. It's uh, the leaders must uh, wake up and then uh, what they promise to do, they have to do it. But uh, if you ask me my experience in exile and up to now, uh, I will uh, give you an example that uh, we are like a, a kind of, a, I was a very good signaler, you see? And I was a, a signaler to the uh, CEO of Hinasari. I was going to the external kennel, going everywhere. Now, in a radio net, uh, it's a group of radio stations working together on a frequency to achieve the same people. So whatever we are doing, it's a long shot because we, we haven't reached that stage whereby we can decide for ourselves uh, because I'm talking about the imperialists they are still having influence on us. So anybody who say that uh, when we come, we can do this and this and that, 
uh, it's not true because we are not self-sufficient like technology. And uh, those people, you see them coming out, you could see that uh, they are taken off. An example is um, uh, what you call Thomas Sankara, now Burkina Faso, Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, and all those people. Anybody who wants to take their destiny into their own hands, first they will let you play ball like they did to Rollins. It's possible that he had good plans, but if you can't, then you must go. So that is the truth, because the Western powers and their allies, their economies are dependent on our resources for their mm -hmm. survival from slavery up to now, emancipation, whatever you call it, community. And up to today, the 400 years, you see the French are going. But when the French go, then the Russians come. If the Russians go, the Chinese come. You see, that is the truth. I get you. So, and I, I, I think we should be able to have a part two of this conversation. But folks, yeah. that's where we end today's edition of Upfront. Many thanks to you for joining us.